In the year 2001, a temporary checkpoint was erected at Kalandia following a terrorist bombing alert. One day, the first concrete blocks appeared, some sandbags, several soldiers and the Israeli flag. My first time at Kalandia, I wept. This was in January 2002. For the first time I was seeing, live, not in film, men, women and children lining up to be inspected by a soldier in the freezing wind of Kalandia. The soldier was one of ours. Nora filmed me from behind, perhaps so my tears wouldn't show. And here I am again. With my little old stills camera, I am photographing what, two years after its erection as a temporary checkpoint, has become more and more permanent. Everything has changed. No more sentry post, no sandbags. Now there are lanes, signs. Even the bagel vendor is here. And the Israeli flag, still here. I joined the Checkpoint Watch Group, Machsom Watch, after retiring. My friend Rina told me about a group of women who oppose the occupation and go out to the checkpoints around Jerusalem. Day in, day out, they monitor them, documenting and reporting what happens just minutes away from home. So everyone will know. As for me, I was looking for a way to help my country be one of justice, equality, honesty and humility. I joined Maksom Watch. in 2003 we got our first video camera and I have been filming ever since I film fences being put up crossings built sheds erected there are no heroes in this film no personal stories just people crossing the checkpoint day in day out I film people going to work in East Jerusalem. Patients on their way to get medical treatment in East Jerusalem. Children going to school in East Jerusalem. For East Jerusalem is the hub of everyday life for West Bank residents. The Kalandia checkpoint separates Palestinians from Palestinians. What 
While still new at the checkpoint, I was naive enough to think that regulations had some regularity about them. Very soon I realized that this is not so. Instructions change from day to day. Yesterday, 30-year-olds and up were allowed through. Today, only 40-year-olds and up. Children might be allowed to bypass the line one day. Other days, they are forced to line up inside like the others. You can read on another side. Every day, I come here and I pass. Every day. So what happened today? I <laughs> don't A Palestinian preparing to go to work in the morning cannot know whether he will actually get there today. Winter in Kalandia. People are sick of hearing about Arab suffering, horrible checkpoints and the horrendous occupation. Say friends when they hear I am making a film about the Kalandia checkpoint. Tell us, why do you even go there? What do you feel standing at the checkpoint? Aren't you scared? How do you sleep at night? How can you stand at checkpoints for so many years? What do I feel standing at the checkpoint? Four children have been shot to death at the Kalandia checkpoint over the years. The children threw stones, and the soldiers fired. And here again, children are throwing stones, and the army has reinforced its troops. 
הופה. הופה, הוא מחבל. הוא מחבל. Most of the children have backed off, but one boy is obstinate. He doesn't give in. He actually approaches the fence. At last he ran off, and I was filled with relief. One of the checkpoint rules. Only Israeli ID holders are allowed to cross the checkpoint by car. Everyone else walks. From taxis on the one side to taxis on the other side. A new, unfamiliar sound emerged from the checkpoint this morning. Approaching, I saw that new turnstiles had been added. The Palestinians call them al-ma'ata, chicken pluckers. הוא הולך לפי הצל שלי. בקרוסלות אתה לא תצליח להסתיר. Pointing my camera at those homebound towards Ramallah, I saw turnstiles there too. These people are not inspected, but they too have turnstiles to cross. I met Moran, a Palestinian from Ramallah. 
מה את חושבת על המחסומים? זה נורא קשה וכואב, אבל מבחינתי שאני עוברת בכל החיים במערב ירושלים, בשביל להיות הרבה ביטחון. גם היהודי עצמו, אם הוא עולה לאוטובוס, שואלים אותו מה שלומך וזה, ועושים לפעמים את יהודה אם הם חושדים בו, אז הוא... אבל הוא משתף פעולה, למה הוא יודע שזה העוזר. את יודעת כל פעם שאימא שומעת בגיבוע, היא מתחילה להתקשר, אם אנחנו לא עונים באמצע העבודה, היא מתחילה לבכות, כאילו אנחנו הלכנו בגיבוע. אז גם מתחשבים באימהות, אימא לא סתם גידלה את הילד ואת הבת שלה, שתאבד אותו ככה. זה לא מספיק. ביי מורן, תודה. I have been standing at the checkpoint for over two years. With time, my observation becomes more and more personal, closer and closer. These are no longer just faces passing by. I recognize them. They each have a family, children, worries and joys, and names unknown to me. I have often imagined myself a Palestinian, crammed inside this waiting line, looking at Mahsom watchers monitoring, writing, photographing, and leaving. What do they think of me, standing here watching them? Do I have the right to photograph them? This is my third year at the checkpoint. Again, I am hearing new sounds. Bulldozers. A wall is being constructed and a new checkpoint alongside it. This wall is called, in Hebrew, the Jerusalem Enfolding Wall. Such a caressing name for separation. I can hardly imagine how a wall could be built along a main street, splitting a Palestinian neighborhood in two. It is as though an eight-meter wall were erected along Herzl Avenue in Jerusalem, and the checkpoint set up at the entry to my neighborhood of Betakirin. As a native of Jerusalem, I remember well the wall that separated us from the old city. As children, we would visit the Musrara neighborhood where it stood. Back then, this was the border. We would peek in the cracks and see normal people normal children, vendors, a vegetable market, lots of cars. Normal life behind the wall. Will a wall close in on Jerusalem yet again?
זה תבנית, עולה 40 שקל, אני כל היום עושה 40 50 שקל, אז כל היום שלי הלך רק לתבנית הזו, בחינם, איפה אני אלך? אני יש לי, יש לי חמישה ילדים. לא יודע מה הם מתנהגים בצורה, כאילו... למה לא נותנים למוכר הבית האלה לעבור? Often, when I would ask the soldiers why, their reply was just because. I said that I will move to Ramallah. I can't work. I, uh, my duty starts at 9 uh, and after. Uh, so they said you can't pass. Why? Because I am I am from Jenin. Ah. I am from Jenin. Uh -huh. That's it. I can't pass. This morning, I learned a new word, bidul, fragmentation. A resident of the northern West Bank is denied entry to the central or southern West Bank. The specialists call this cantonization. I don't get the meaning. I only see people who want to get through and are not allowed to do so. What important meeting has just been called off? A doctor's appointment, a court session, or just some bank paperwork undone. Just like that, with a wave of the hand. The Palestinians keep asking me, what do we get out of your being here? What do you do for us? What am I doing here indeed? Clearing my own conscience? Sometimes they say, Sauri, Sauri, film this, film this so everyone will see. And that is really all I can do. Document, document, film like crazy, fill dozens of tapes, hundreds of hours of footage. I cannot help. I feel helpless. I've seen many detainees at the checkpoint throughout my years here, seeking work even if they hold no entry permit to Jerusalem. They are caught, detained for punishment, and then released. Just like that. Two hours detention used to be the maximum. Then it became three, and even more. Thank you. 
הבעיה מתחילה שם כבר לא עם הספר, הבעיה לא מתחילה בחינוך. גם בכיבוש, גם בתנ״ך כתוב, עזוב תעזוב תמגר אשר בשעה, אבל לא למדו את זה, כן? הרי כאן מתחילה הבעיה שאנחנו נתפתנו את הקטעים הכי... לא אנחנו זה, אבל אנחנו אשמים, אבל אנחנו אשמים. Today, I share great joy at the checkpoint, newlyweds. The bride is from East Jerusalem, the groom from Ramallah. He cannot come to pick her up at her home as tradition would have it, for he has no permit. They meet at the checkpoint. Mazal tov. Banksy is one of the best-known graffiti artists in the world. One of his works has lately been auctioned for a record price of 322,000 pounds sterling. Now he is here, trying to raise public interest in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I read in the paper that Israel, for its part, intends to cover the Jerusalem separation wall with paint-repelling spray so no graffiti will take. With or without Banksy, the wall is closing in on Jerusalem. And I go home after my shift, a 15-minute drive from the checkpoint, staring at the tree-shaded streets flowering gardens, changing traffic lights. So near, yet so far. Off to my yoga class. No one stops me. Another winter in Kalandia. I am asked how I manage to sleep at night. A glass of red wine, perhaps two. When I first got to the new checkpoint, 
a bright new sign welcomed me. The hope of us all. The new checkpoint is now called Terminal. Exiting the checkpoint, I was surprised to see the same group of youngsters I had filmed earlier still standing there with their faces to the wall. Now it was obvious. These are detainees. They went to seek work and were caught without permits. I crossed the new checkpoint from side to side. An entrance turnstile. Another turnstile at the inspection point. Another after the inspection and yet another at the exit from the checkpoint. Through that door, the girl soldier ordered. I entered a tiny, windowless, totally dark cell, the dungeon. This is where those who look suspect are kept for further checks. Claustrophobic, I was already suffocating. Luckily, I had my cell phone and began to sound the alarm. Someone gave an order and I was rescued. I came out pale and trembling. The soldiers outside were amused. Lo sabor, sacer. 
This is the first time I see so many people at the checkpoint in the morning. The Palestinians explained that many passageways had been sealed, and from now on, everyone would have to cross here. People say I'm an extremist, that I don't see both sides of the coin, that not everything is black and white. Yes, I know, I know. Security, terrorists, bombings. But what does all this have to do with security? Do you, do you feel our suffering? Every day. Every day is like that? Yes. Every day we are here. Every day you are here. Yes. Well, every day we are suffering. Every day we have uh, several time to, to spend here. Maybe uh, half an hour, maybe more. Every day. 
here half an hour, also uh, there a quarter an hour. <laughs> You have to speak with them to yeah. let us pass without any suffering. To 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 be a, a human being. Where do you work? Teacher. You are teacher. Where? In Frer uh, College, the Frer. Ah. In the Brothers Frer. School. In Frer. Beit Hanina and Jerusalem. There is two two schools here. And you are from Ramallah. Yes. Every day here from six o'clock. God will help you. Thanks. First Friday of the Ramadan. Arriving this morning, we saw crowds of people facing the iron railings the police had placed there, not allowing them to approach the checkpoint itself. We tried to find out what had happened. This is my We were told that instructions from the Minister of Defense were to allow those holding work entry permits for Jerusalem through the checkpoint in order to pray at the Al-Aqsa Mosque on this holiest of days. But the Minister of Internal Security was of a different mind, and instructions were changed overnight. Only those with a special prayer permit could go pray in Jerusalem. The tens of thousands of Palestinians who came 
are not allowed in. When I look at these children in their holiday clothes on the way to prayer, I recall my father taking me to the synagogue on Yom Kippur to hear the sound of the shofar. I would stand at his side surrounded by men praying, heads covered in their prayer shawls, bodies devoutly rocking to and fro. When the shofar sounded, I would look up at the ceiling and imagine it opening so the pleas and prayers would rise all the way to heaven. I'm 
kami taas sir. This morning, Nava is late picking me up for our shift. I'm glad. I'll get back into bed for another few hours of sleep. I can't take this anymore. Tired of the Palestinians. Tired of the Israelis. I just want to sleep. But Nava showed up, and sleep was out. And here we are again. It is 5.30 in the morning, in the freezing cold of Kalandia. People ask me how come I'm not scared. Standing here among so many people on their way to work, I am not scared. بين <laughs> הם לא יעשו לי קל במצעות. אני אעבוד, מוכן לעבוד, וכולם מוכנים לעבוד. ואצל חמאס. זה חיים זה? איפה חיים אנחנו? איך בנט חטיף? איך בנט חטיף? איפה? איפה ילד? 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 Oh, 
отвлечены а Амари Медабер. Амари Медабер, Эмет Олео, Эмет Тагиди, Эмет Олео. אז מה אני מדבר מהלחץ? אתם לא נותנים לנו לחיות, זה הבעיה, לא נותנים לנו לחיות כמו שצריך. February 20th, 2008. I've been standing at the checkpoints for six years now. How can I be at the checkpoints for so long? This has probably become an obsession. About 10 years ago, I was introduced to the path of Buddhism, a path that acknowledges no chosen people, no better or worse people, a path in which all sentient beings may live in happiness, equanimity, and without suffering. A path of compassion, a concept we so rarely use. Compassion is what we could be feeling towards one another. Compassion means that all sentient beings may live in bliss. Compassion means not just the self, but the other as well. I know compassion exists for us in Judaism too. But where is it? Where has it gone? Dokumentaren viser vi også førstkommende søndag kveld her på NRK 2. Vi nevner også dagens dokumentar i morgen, Ingen skarpe gjenstander, som handler om 15 gutter fra Gaza, som i fjor fikk lov til å reise til USA for å oppleve noe av den verden som finnes utenfor Gazas murer. I morgen kveld klokken 22.30. Ved midnatt viser vi tredje del av dokumentarserien på tynn is, der vi følger tre britiske harhauser som deltar i en konkurranse i Amundsen og Skotts fotspor, nemlig om å komme først til Sydpolen. Tid på et i natt skal det dreie seg om liv og død i ut i naturen. Noen mennesker sammenligner det å gå på jakt med å høste bær og sopp, men er det å ta et liv det samme som å plukke bær? Tett på Afrikas